Greetings, I'm Jennifer Yuga. I'm the managing director and owner of Corvertis. Right now it's July, the days are long, and a lot of us unfortunately are managing hotter than normal temperatures or temperatures that are uncomfortable and even heat waves. And I read recently that even though we have air conditioning and can avoid the heat in a lot of cases, of course, in some cases we can't. A lot of people are working in, uh, in dangerous temperatures. But for a lot of us, we're able to enjoy uh, a climate-controlled environment. Even though we have that, it still affects us on a biological level. It could be because we're having to alter our patterns to to of when we go outside, or even those brief periods outside affect us biologically. We see a decrease in serotonin and dopamine, which help regulate our emotions. Aggression increases, crime increases, uh, there's increased you know, mental health challenges, and even cognitive function can decrease. And while that all merits concern, what sparked uh, the idea for this, this month's newsletter was thinking about whether or not our teams and our companies and organizations could be stuck in a heat wave, and maybe we don't know it, or maybe that groups within our organization could be struggling and feeling stifled. And again, we're not aware, and there could be easy, realistic actions to take that uh, could help reduce the temperature and help people feel more comfortable and grow and produce more and be more innovative within their respective roles. So we are in the middle of a year, and with that, it's a phenomenal time to take a look at how you're tackling employee listening. What are your systems for gathering feedback from employees, whether that's uh, you know, performance feedback, employee engagement surveys, uh, encouraging leaders and leadership development where they're directly hands-on talking with their teams, gathering their input. And in addition to that, coupling that with three core areas that drive motivation and well-being right now. And I'm going to share these and provide some of my own experience as a leader and things that we've done to uh, within our team and that I've led to capitalize on these three core areas for well-being as well as motivation. So there are autonomy, uh, competence, as well as relatedness that are shown in both in lab studies as well as out in the field, when you're able to increase those, the degree of motivation, persistence, and as well as as well as well-being all increase. So with autonomy, um, one lesson that I've harnessed, especially when I might be having my own personal stifling heat wave and struggling through something, with autonomy, not just for me, but for my my team, is to increase the extent to which I delegate. Uh, if this is a phenomenal way to increase delegating, providing new p people with new tasks to take on, uh, is wonderful to be able to build skills and understand if um, understand people's skill levels more deeply, determine what areas they might be interested in, and there might be something that they don't know about, and they, they're delegated a task, and then they're able to evolve that into something meaningful and take it to places that you never would have envisioned possible before. The next piece would be to just look at uh, competence. So competence is the degree to which I feel confident or feel that I'm skilled, that I'm expert, I'm capable of doing something. And taking a look at just skill development. Where is your team right now with their skills? Of course, succession planning, and especially with the demographics that we have right now, is critical. But more broadly, where do people need coaching? And could there be areas of their job where they might feel that stifled heat wave analogy, and that could be resolved and you could reduce some of that temperature by providing them with additional resources and coaching and development and having that roadmap. So we are, you know, mid-year, this is a phenomenal time to take a look and see how we could strengthen skills in reasonable ways, maybe through one-on-one -on -one mentoring, working together, things that don't cost very much uh, before we reach the end of the year. Uh, in addition, just feedback. To what extent are your leaders actively seeking constructive feedback from people? Giving them constructive feedback are phenomenal ways to increase competence. The last piece is relatedness, relationships, interconnections, the extent to which teams have strong bonds both within their team as well as across with other teams directly influences their commitment to one another and just the, the positive connection that they feel to the organization overall. And when I think about this, 
I think about our team's journey when we went from being a largely in-person, pretty much entirely in-person team uh, back in 2020 to very quickly working from our respective homes, which is largely how we've stayed. And we've been able to thrive and I actually feel closer and I think our team would agree we feel closer to one another because of how we've figured out different points of connection throughout the week, um, whether it's one-on-ones, team get-togethers virtually to talk about projects and the things we have to do, uh, brainstorm together, as well as having some social points of connection to virtually and then throughout the year in person as well. And that was definitely a journey in figuring out what worked for us, uh, but tech taking the temperature, if you will, of how people are connecting and their interrelatedness. Of course, there's a lot of different tools. And when you're talking about you know, how people are feeling uh, and whether or not there might be certain groups of people, uh, whether within a department or at a certain level of tenure or in, uh, in a certain phase of their career, whether they feel stifled, again, that active listening, employee feedback, employee listening is so absolutely critical. And in our newsletter, we have a couple of resources that might be useful to you. The first being, uh, we talk a little bit about the culture map, which is a process that we go through that looks at where your culture is now compared to where it should be. And you can look at that across all different levels and types of groups within the organization. And then I also included in our newsletter a uh, blog I wrote a number of years ago that looked at a connection between the extent to which a company emphasizes teamwork as part of their culture and how that could potentially uh, adversely affect strong performers. Sometimes it's called the tall poppy syndrome, uh, where if there's a strong focus on collaboration and, and teamwork, if that's not coupled with uh, a strong set of core values, like I was talking about with uh, with culture, that it could result in, in um, top performers, people with high potential being suppressed. And that, again, ties into this whole idea of that there could be things you're not seeing, people struggling, people feeling stifled, dealing with that hot temperature um, that could be alleviated so they can grow and develop and stay as long-term contributors as part of your enterprise that, that flourish and uh, grow into even stronger contributors over time. So that's, that's our takeaway today. Uh, is mitigating these these challenges that can pop up and just as the temperatures rise and we don't really know it and then all of a sudden we're we're wondering why things are the way they are, why we're uncomfortable, that the same thing can happen, the same dynamic can happen within our organization. And it's only through actively seeking feedback and actively listening that we're going to be able to thrive and prosper and keep the culture that we care so deeply about. <music>